Bill Oram did a great job in summing all of this up, not just yesterday, last night, but the entire season. He's uh, the Lakers writer for The Athletic. Bill, what the hell happened last night? Dan, it's, it's, it's astounding. And, I mean, just to kind of give you a sense of how this went down, Luke Walton concluded his pregame media availability, which, you know, every game at 5.45 p.m. in Los Angeles, he talks for 10 or 15 minutes. And everybody kind of assumed this was the last time. So there was kind of a somber tone from Luke. And Magic Johnson was kind of lingering. And he comes over and says, and kind of jokes to the PR person, when do I get to go? And then he kind of takes a beat and goes, no, I'm going to go. And he holds out his hand. She tries to stop him. And he gets behind the podium and says he's quitting. It was absolutely surreal and unlike anything I've ever seen. Um, picking through the pieces of this, it's something we're going to probably be doing for a long time. But, um, you know, the fact that he didn't talk to Jeannie Buss beforehand and said basically that he thought it would be too emotional and that he thought that, you know, she would talk him out of it. Um, you know, once he put himself on the record in front of the media, you know, on in front of all those cameras, there really was no backing out. Um, so he talked for 40 minutes, uh, tried to leave, stopped and talked for another 20 minutes, um, and then said he was going to go try to try to go find Jeannie and, and talk to her. It was unlike anything I've ever seen and probably would, will ever see again, um, especially when you consider the, the figure that we're talking about here, the stature that Magic Johnson has in Los Angeles with the Lakers, the job he was hired to do, um, the job he has done. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of, a lot to hold on to if you if you want to criticize the job Magic Johnson and Rob Polinka have done. But the bottom line is they did emerge with LeBron James. He's under contract for three more years. That is a pretty decent starting block. Um, but now it's going to be back to the drawing board for the Lakers, who you know, really are now you know kind of in this. In I I, I view it kind of as a, as a chance for Jeannie Buss to kind of uh, get it right this time after after kind of reaching for what was the, the comfortable choice in magic last time, but really a, um, a pretty, a pretty staggering moment. But you have the Lakers, they whiffed on free agents here. And I always wondered, was magic the right guy? Because this was about magic Johnson mm -hmm. and his personality, his competitiveness. And he couldn't help himself. He was like, we're getting Paul George. You're like, you're not allowed to say that. And then we're trading for Anthony Davis. No, no, you can't do that right now. It, it, it felt like he he every loss was his loss instead of it being hey we're we're just going to figure this out this is all about just understanding who we have and and you know players who are going to be in it for the long haul or not and then we can assess this when the season is over I, I i was preaching that the entire season and then all of a sudden it felt like they panicked and they go you know what we're not gonna make the playoffs let's get Anthony Davis in here. And then all of a sudden, you know, you got Luke Walton's job in jeopardy. Then you got all the injuries here. If it could go wrong, it did go wrong. Amazing. Yeah. And I think, um, I think you're right about the personality as well. I mean, you go back to last summer, there was that, that lengthy um, summer league interview where he basically laid out his vision for why he thought the team was put together correctly with, you know, with ball handlers and, and, and going against shooters. And there was kind of an incredible, I thought hubris with the way the the team was constructed, despite everyone kind of raising their hands saying, Hey, wait a minute. You don't have shooters around LeBron James. You're, you're, you're bucking the convention that has gotten him to eight straight finals. Are you sure you know what you're doing? And then during the world series, he's on the world series broadcast and says, yeah, I got, I got LeBron James this summer. And you know what? Next summer I'm going to get another free agent. I'm going to get another superstar. And you just don't hear that. And there was, you know, you know and it, it, there was a video that was circulating online a couple of weeks ago in contrast of the way Magic Johnson was talking versus the way Jerry West talks. Uh, um, and, and the way, you know, Jerry West would say, you know, you don't talk about how great you are. You talk, you, you know, you let the job do you're talking, you know, I was never comfortable in the spotlight. And then you contrast that with the way magic behaved. And it's, it's, it's just, it's just the way he is, he is wired, which was yeah. great for a player. And maybe it's, it's great for his businesses, but it always struck a very strange note coming from the big chair of a basketball team, particularly one that wasn't winning. And so, um, you know, the Lakers are going to hit reset here. And as it pertains to Luke Walton, Dan, I think, I, I think, I think, I think you have felt like you've got a little bit of a raw deal this season or was set to get a raw deal. Yeah. Um, it sure sounds like magic is, 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 is stepping down. So Jeannie can, can keep her guy in place, which I'm not, and I've, I've, I've been a supporter of Luke Walton as well, but I'm not entirely sure that's great business either. Like make the 
you have to make the right business decision and stand by it and, and move forward. You, you can't, you can't quit. So your, your best friend doesn't have to fire somebody she loves. If the, if the, if the feeling in the building is that you need to make a replacement, it's, it's just a very, it's a very strange, messy situation. I mean, it's, it's 7 AM in LA. Um, I think we kind of thought that we'd be getting a Luke Walton announcement around now before the, before this magic thing happened. And now nobody knows it's going to happen, whether they'll move think, forward with him, whether they'll do you think the vision. Luke thought he was being fired last night. Like he, yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it's amazing. Really, it, it, and and I, if I said you could interview any of the principals here, like you can go LeBron, you can do Magic, Genie, who, who would you want to have a sit down one on one with today? Genie Bus, because it is this story touches all of the, you know, all of it touches every nerve. I mean, it is emotional. It is, it is family. It is, you know, I mean, I mean, Dan, it's kind of Shakespearean, right? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Does she feel betrayed by Magic not talking to her before he goes in front of the cameras? Does she does she feel let down that he you know only gave this two years? I mean, this has to be an extremely emotional day, an extremely emotional um, chapter for her. I mean, when you when you understand kind of what the Lakers mean to her, not just as um, as her business, but the family business, what it meant to her to be entrusted with the Lakers by her father. Um, before he passed away in 2013 and what she believed it would have meant for him to reach into the organization's past, hire Magic Johnson to save the team, only for him to say very abruptly two years in, uh, this isn't for me, I can't be me anymore, and just walk away. Um, so that, I think, is probably the most compelling aspect of this. But then the other part is, what in the hell is the team going to do? <laughs> you have you have a massive summer. You have a 34 year old LeBron James, and you have you have cap space, but no real great indications that any of the top players in free agency are going to want to take that money. So how do you how do you stabilize this franchise in a matter of frankly weeks to make this a more appealing destination than it was when Magic Johnson was here? And so. She, when, she, when she had the opportunity to hire Magic or when she had the opportunity to fire her brother, Mitch Kupchak, and reshape the front office in her vision, she did something that was um, uh, easy. She hired the people who were closest to her. Yeah. She hired Magic Johnson. She hired Kobe Bryant's agent. And, and I don't think that has gone very well. And so now, um, you know, I think she probably has to take a different tack, which is figure out who the best person in the NBA is and how she can go get them. There is no salary cap limitation on executives. Go figure out who is the very, very best person you can get, not the person with whom you have the best relationship or, or, or think you can trust right off the bat. You can develop a relationship with good people. Bring back um, Jerry West, Bill. Get, I mean, I, I listen, Dan, that is age, age being the only factor and possibly the fact that I think Jerry West might have turned – turned the page himself and is relishing the role of spoiler in Los Angeles. <laughs> um, that, that aside, I think that's great. Otherwise you go down the list, RC Buford in San Antonio, Sam Presti in Oklahoma city, Bob Myers in Oakland, um, Pat Riley, people do move on in their careers. And I know we, we identify those people so much with those franchises, wow. but there is no excuse for Jeannie bus not to be calling those people and saying, $10 million. Do you want to run the Lakers? Uh, it's, it's not, it's not that hard. And if they say no, then you, then you keep moving down the list. I want to, I want to play something that magic said. I don't know if anybody followed up on this. Um, magic was talking about the whispers and the backstabbing. This is what he said yesterday. What I didn't like is the backstabbing and the whispering. I, I, I don't like that. You know, I don't like um, a lot of things that went on that didn't have to go on. And so I hope that after tomorrow, the Lakers can head in the right direction, which we are. What is he talking about? Who's doing the backstabbing and the whispering? Yeah, he was asked about that. And, and he, did, he, he said that it was not necessarily the Lakers, but just basketball in general. Um, but two things. I think, I think the Anthony Davis situation um, was – was a, a pretty key factor here where he felt like in good faith, he'd tried to make it, make a big time move for the Lakers. And there was so much talk. There was so much 
um, information out there about it. It made them very, it made it very difficult for them to operate um, on that deal. Two, um, I'm not sure where, what the state of the relationship between Magic Johnson and Rob Polinka was by the time Magic uh, made this decision. Uh, he was asked directly if he thought Rob Polinka was the right was the right general manager for the job, and he said, <laughs> um, "That's a that's a question that's a question for Jeannie Buss." Ouch. And he alluded to um, maybe some baggage that Rob Polinka has around the league in terms of his reputation, and says he hears it from agents. And then um, said that you know he did say that they always worked well together, but it was certainly not a decision for him. And I thought if that if he if there was a, a, a strong bond there, Magic had an opportunity to. Uh, give give him a strong endorsement on the way out the door, and in listen the other part of it is, people around the league were often, and I heard it, Dan, you probably did too. There was a certain degree of cheerleading about, um, you know, Magic's missteps. He had not done this job before. Yeah. He is a massive personality. In many ways, he couldn't help himself. Um, you know, he got the Lakers fined a couple of times around the league. That was that was cheered. Um, in, in kind of a diabolical sense. And so, you know, when you had any time Magic said something that could be viewed as tampering, you had people, you know, scurrying to the league office trying to get, you know, get it in front of them. And so, you know, he was upset about the Ben Simmons situation where Ben Simmons calls the Lakers and says, hey, I'd love to work with you. You played the position the way I play the position better than anybody else ever has. Can you, can you mentor me? And Magic's, and Magic's version of the story, and we've heard the same from the Sixers, is he called Philadelphia and said, the only way I'll do this is if the league signs off on it. And then Magic shares that story in Philadelphia, and then the wagons kind of circle, and it, <laughs> it, becomes, um, it, becomes, it becomes, oh, did he tamper with Ben Simmons? Wow. And, I, and, and listening to him yesterday, he spent some time talking about that situation, and it seemed like it wounded him quite a bit as well. Good stuff, Bill. I, I, I didn't know if you had your article prepared. You probably had your article prepared of let's sum up the season and Luke Walton being fired and what's going to happen in the offseason. Next thing you know, Magic Johnson, come on down and at the impromptu press conference. What a crazy, crazy day. Crazy. Uh, it's, 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 cra- it's the craziest thing I've covered, Dan. You did a great job with it, summing it up, Bill. And uh, thanks for joining us this season. We appreciate your time. My pleasure. Take care. That's uh, Bill Orm. He covers the Lakers for The Athletic. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV, stream for free on BR Live, or download the Dan Patrick Show app.